Maria Whitner is a fiercely anti-communist opposition member of Hungary's parliament. When Maria goes through her collection of newspapers and magazines from the anti-Soviet rebellion of 1956, the names and faces are not history to her. I knew these people personally, and I fought alongside them. Over its thousand years of history, Hungary has been invaded, overrun, and occupied many times. So the events of 1956 were not unique, just another moment of history for a country often divided between those who accepted an oppressive reality and those who were what the rebels of 1956 were called, freedom fighters. On October 23rd, the day the rebels took temporary power, Freedom fighter Maria Whitner was 19 years old. I was stationed in a building next door to the radio center, loading weapons for two of our gunmen. And two weeks later... On November 4th, when the Russian troops attacked, we couldn't defend ourselves. Mortars rained down on us, houses were destroyed, and that's when I was wounded and taken to the hospital. Maria wound up spending 13 years in prison for her freedom fighting activities. To the watching Western world, the events in Hungary in 1956 were electrifying, spotlighting the reality behind what had been just an empty political phrase, captive nations. And although the rebellion lasted barely two weeks before it was violently crushed, to the West, it seemed to contain an unbreakable promise that one day these captives of communism would once again be free. In Budapest today, everywhere, there are reminders of 1956. I'm sure the 1956 dreams have not come true 100 percent, but we are getting there. For Hungarians, getting there means getting past a history of hurts, of well-remembered foreign invasions and more recent betrayals and murders. Meant to be a cure, Budapest's Terror House Museum. The museum uh, tries to explain uh, some of the most uh, horrific experiences of uh, the Hungarian people in the 20th century. The museum is grim, but its in-your-face confrontation is necessary, says director Maria Schmidt, because in Hungary almost everyone knows the facts of history, but doesn't want to face them. The museum itself is on the site of a communist-era interrogation and torture center, a fact that is both known and hidden. I was a school child, and I remember that we always passed, uh, went to the other side of, the, of this road because we, we knew that this house, which was that time an uh, office building, it has a secret, it has a terrible secret, and nobody wanted to talk about it freely and openly because uh, people were frightened and they, they were afraid to speak up. People in Budapest don't need a museum to remind them of 1956. The walls of many Budapest neighborhoods do that. Some in Hungary see this wall and just see the damage from the battleground. The revolution was a good example, he says, of all Hungarian history. We were trying to find the truth, but when we found it, we didn't like it. Others see the just cause behind the battle. I would be really happy if today's Hungarian society could copy that kind of atmosphere that they had back in 1956, because it, it was a real unity. It was a real like miracle of people really wanting freedom and and working together fighting together for it hungary divided 52 years ago over the fight for freedom and the country hasn't healed yet i'm david marish for world focus in budapest